The 2023 MLB trade deadline is officially over as of yesterday. Overall, it was pretty much what I expected. This featured great teams getting greater and bad teams getting badder. Also, yeah, I know it's not a word. I just wanted to piss you off. Anyways, the point is there have been a few teams that have sold and some that of course bought and then many that just stayed put and where they were at. A lot of big trades and also a ton of minor trades. So therefore, I'm just going to be going over the notable trades. This will not be every single MLB team that I'm going to be grading. Only certain trades that I think are going to be making impacts. We'll start with the Marlins. I'm going to give them a B plus grade. I like their deadline a lot, but also got confused with some of the things that they did. They traded away Garrett Cooper to the San Diego Padres and overall didn't get much for him. That player who they got back was Ryan Weathers, lefty pitcher with a 6 ERA, maybe some potential but overall just isn't good. I would have thought for a player like Cooper, a righty bat who had a 256 average and 13 home runs would have been valued a little bit more. So you'd think that now they have a hole at first base, but they instead filled it right away bringing in switch-hitting first baseman Josh Bell. Statistically, his bat is a downgrade in OPS, batting average, and the home run production. It was a cheap price to add Bell, trading away Gene Segura and Khalil Watson. Watson, a prospect who once had a lot of potential and was once considered a top prospect, but has had a very poor 2023. Then Gene, who has had a poor production in the major league level in 2023. While I may not have really agreed with that whole first base swap, and I think it was even a downgrade, I do agree with them bringing in Jake Berger. He's been one of the best righty power bats in the MLB in 2023 for the Chicago White Sox, and I don't really see that changing either. Jake Berger has 25 home runs and an 806 OPS. In return, they gave up their number four prospect, Jake Etter, a double A pitcher with maybe some potential, the last move they made was Dave Robinson, who I think is going to make a pretty solid impact on the team. They were in need of a bullpen arm and specifically a closer. They go ahead and do that, trading with the Mets and bringing in David Robertson. Next, we'll go into a division rival, aka the New York Mets. Now, they might have had a little bit of a different approach, aka being sellers, but it was still pretty fun. They tried to buy heavy in the 2021 offseason and the 2022 offseason, it may have even worked in 2022 as they won 100 games, but in this 2023 regular season for the New York Mets, they've been awful. They traded away a good amount of players, and this includes guys like superstar Max Scherzer, who was sent away to the Rangers, and in return they got one player. That player is Ronald Acuna Jr.'s brother. His name is Luis Angel Acuna, no clue if I said his name right, but I believe I did, and he's a shortstop with a dominant bat. I believe in the long run, this trade really will pay off for the Mets. This kid has a 315 average and 7 home runs to go along with an 830 OPS and 360 at-bats. The other players they traded was Justin Verlander. The other big player that is that they traded was Justin Verlander. They got a lot for him. Of course, trading him back to his former team, the Houston Astros. They got two of the Astros' top prospects for him, an outfielder Drew Gilbert who had 12 home runs, and in AA he looks pretty solid. The other guy who they got was a high A player in Ryan Clifford. He had a 291 average with 18 homers, plus a 19, 919 OPS that is. Safe to say the return is pretty great for the Mets. I think that they made the minor league system a lot better. I'm a big fan of what they did. I will give the Mets an A-. minus. Moving on to the next NL East team, the Philadelphia Phillies, who had an okay deadline, right? Bringing in Michael Lorenzen. As a Red Sox fan, I was really hoping for Lorenzen to be moved into Boston, but hey, it is what it is. He had a 358 ERA with the Tigers, and it gives them an extra arm to work with. Although they had to give up a top prospect in Heo Yu Lee, a third baseman who is having a pretty decent season in high A. The other trade they made was Bailey Falter for Rodolfo Castro. Castro, of course, was on the Pirates. He was a switch hitter with awful defense, but also pretty solid power. So it's not really anything that's going to make much of an impact, but just thought I'd say that. Anyways, I'd give the Phillies a B minus offseason, or not offseason, trade deadline. I like Lorenzen a lot. He'll be super productive in Philly. Next up, the Orioles. 
Baltimore wants to win the AL East very badly over the Tampa Bay Rays. It would be huge for them, but they also have a need. That need is pitching, specifically starting pitching. So they went ahead and addressed that need by trading with the Cardinals and bringing in Jack Flaherty. Didn't have to give up much as he is in a contract year and he even has struggled. He has a 449 ERA in 109 innings so far this season. I think a change of scenery will be very good for him and his career. I give the trade a C+. The other ALS, AL East team that went in the starting pitching category was the Tampa Bay Rays, who they're trying to compete with, right? The Orioles and the Rays are neck to neck. Well, the Rays went ahead and brought in starting pitcher Aaron Savali from the Guardians, a player who was having a pretty good year with the Guardians, especially considering they needed back-end starters. Savali would will slide into that rotation pretty perfectly. I'll give it a B-. minus. They had to give up a lot in a top first base prospect, but in the end, they needed to be aggressive to bring in a pitcher one way or another, especially whenever you're trying to fight to win the AL East, the best division in all of baseball. The last AL East team that really went for it was the Toronto Blue Jays. A small move bringing in Paul DeYoung. It does, of course, fill a hole in set from Bo Bichette's injury. So, I mean, hey, I guess I'll give them that, right? That was brutal, the Bo Bichette injury. It will hurt your team, but bringing in Paul DeYoung is going to be able to really help. Overall, it makes sense to go ahead and bring in DeYoung, but it won't change much. He's an okay player. I'll give it a C-. Now, I was a bit of, you know, I guess, confused with this other team's approach, which is the Padres. This morning, they brought in G-Man Choi and Rich Hill from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Choi being a depth first baseman, but nothing special. Hill being a serviceable pitcher, but still not really that good. And I think ultimately, they will miss out on the playoffs. I will say Garrett Cooper is a pretty good get for them, but of course he came over in that Marlins trade for pretty much nothing. So, you know, again, I like that trade a lot, but I'm just not really sure why they're buying. They get a C plus at the very least. I would have probably went ahead and traded Snell, but hey, that's just me. Next, the Brewers, who traded for Andrew Chafin from the Diamondbacks. I like the move acquiring a lefty bullpen arm. It was a need, right? Although he has had a down year in 2023, Hopefully with Milwaukee, he could turn things around. They'll likely win the week at El Central, and I think adding Chafin will only provide a reinforcement. I'd give it probably a C+. And speaking of the NL Central, the Cardinals also sold off quite a bit, right? Trading Paul DeYoung, Jack Flaherty, not to mention starter Jordan Montgomery, reliever Chris Shat Stratton, and traded to the Rangers. Of course they were. Um, that is, of course, Stratton and Montgomery. But, you know, they traded a lot of different guys. And in return, they got a few prospects, some being good, some just kind of being subpar. It is what it is, but ultimately, it won't really end up resulting in much. At least that's what I think. This, you know, trade deadline gets probably about a C plus for me. It is what it is. Moving into that Rangers division, super, super competitive. The Rangers buck, bringing in pitcher Max Scherzer, Jordan Montgomery, and Chris Stratton, as well as a catcher in Austin Hedges. They want to win, and it's very clear. And, you know, I think that they're going to win a lot of games with that team. Ultimately, you just got to really hope that Nathan Eovaldi gets healthy, as he did recently suffer an injury. I would give it an A-plus offseason. They did everything that they could to get better. Next up, the Houston Astros, who brought in Justin Verlander. And as we went over, they traded a, a, a top prospect for Justin Verlander. But still, you add an ace like Verlander into your rotation? Yeah, you're, you're going to be very, very good. I'll give it an A+. This team is the real deal, and I think that we have to start taking the Astros like the real deal that they are. The last team in the division that bought was the Angels. It didn't really make much sense for them to buy. At least that's what I thought, right? Keeping Otani instead of trading him. So they end up trading for pitcher Lucas Giolito. First baseman CJ Crone. So now they have the Crone zone on their team. The real Crone zone, of course. And a few others who will make solid additions. I like what they did. I just don't really understand it. I don't believe they're as good as the other teams in their division, and let alone their division, the AL East is very, very competitive. I think it's going to be super tough for them to get a wild card spot. I know I didn't go over every MLB team, but I think I went over the most notable trades and the most notable things that happened. There was a lot. There was a lot that happened. Let me know what you thought. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to drop a like if you have not already, and peace out.